Hello, this is Jeremy, and in this video I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you how we can take a frequency distribution and create uh, and find the cumulative frequency and the relative frequency and even mess with the histogram with that. So, okay, so what I have here is for a data set uh, frequency distribution. You can see that the classes are going by a class with the fate because we go from one to nine. And remember, that means one up to nine. So if we actually have a data value of nine, it's down here. So all of these are going up by eight. Um, when I look at this and I want to say, okay, uh, what percentage of the data set was between 9 and 17 or 9 up to 17, I would have to go through and calculate the total and then say 10 over the total and get the percentage. But sometimes if you're interested in that, one thing you can do is calculate the relative frequency for all of the classes. This can be useful when you want to highlight the percentages in each class instead of just the frequency. So relative frequency is really percentage. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to have to do some calculations. And the first one I'm going to have to do is figure out the total. So the total number of data points is 12 plus 10 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2. And so when I add this up, I end up with 36. Okay, so we have a total of 36. So we can call this n data values. Now, relative frequency, again, is a percentage. So percentages are always part over the whole. So for the first class, it would be 12 over 36. For the next class, it would be 10 over 36. For the third class, 8 over 36. For the next class, 4 over 36. And for the next class, 2 over 36. Okay, so I can calculate each of these, and as I get the percentages, I can just round them off. And usually we end up, instead of writing as a percentage, we actually leave it as a decimal. So for example, 12 over 36, that's a third, so this is 0 0.33. And so up here, I'll go ahead and add that to my table and say, okay, this is 0 0.33. And then 10 over 36. So that's 10 divided by 36. I end up with 0.277 repeating. So, so to keep consistent, I'll round that to 0.28 and so on, so eight divided by 36, et cetera. So as I'm calculating these, I'm making sure that I round consistently. There's not a certain rule that says you have to round to a certain point or not. And so that's not too important to worry about. And I make sure that everything lines up and looks nice, but of course, usually software would be worrying about that for me. So finally, for two out of 36, I get 0 0.055, so 06 would be a nice rounding. Now, one way I can double check myself is the relative frequencies should add up to approximately one because they cover every possible value in the class. Everything is accounted for. So when you go to add them up, the only reason it might not add up to exactly one is because we rounded quite a bit. So either way, that's one double check I could do. Now, other than the relative frequency, another useful tool can be the cumulative frequency. So what I'm doing is extending my table a little bit. And we actually could do cumulative relative or just cumulative frequency. They're both the same idea, so what we'll just do is cumulative frequency. This is most useful for the graph called an ogive, which we don't talk about in this course, uh, but it is in your book. It is interesting, but it's not that common of a graph. Cumulative frequency can be useful uh, also for finding percentiles and things like that, which we'll end up talking about later. All cumulative frequency does is add up the, make a running total basically add up as we go. So for the first class, the cumulative frequency is 12. For the next one, we now have 10 and 12. So the next group would be 22. And now we're going to add the 8 from the third class, so it's 30. Add the 4 from the next class, so it's 34. And the 2 from the next class is 36. Notice at the end, I end up with 36, which is the same as the uh, original number of data values down here. So as you can see, I could do cumulative relative as well. I just keep a running total. So it'd be 0.33 for the first. And then the second one would be 0.33 plus 0.28. The next one would be that number plus 0.22 and et cetera. We won't see that as often, but you could also do that. So cumulative frequency, most commonly used for an ogive. For us, we'll probably focus more on frequency and relative frequency because those can be used to make histograms. So with a frequency, just the frequency, we already have seen how to make a histogram, but how could you make a histogram with relative frequency? Well, the only change would be that on this left-hand axis, you're now talking about relative frequency. So we just replace 
the frequency with relative frequency. And notice that the highest percentage we had was 33% in the first class. So if we wanted to do that, we actually could have a pretty nice scale. Here we go to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And then we would have our classes down here like usual. So 1 to 9, etc. And so this is almost exactly the same as what we did before. Again, the only change is that we're using relative frequency as the height of the bars. So how would you recognize looking at a histogram that this was done? Well, of course, if it's not labeled, which it should be, frequency would be whole numbers while relative frequency wouldn't be. Relative frequency would have to be smaller than one. And so for the first one, we go up to 0.33. Of course, drawing on a computer, this isn't going to be the most perfect graph. I'm assuming you can draw a little bit nicer. Next one's 0.28, so a little bit below. Next one's 0.22, so we're just above the 0.2. Next one's 0.11. And next one's 0.06, so not quite 0.1. This is a very right skewed distribution if you can't notice. Now, we don't have the data set with us, so we can't explain, well, why might it be right skewed? What's interesting about that? We just are looking at this as a set of numbers right now. But again, the shape would be exactly the same if I did a regular frequency histogram. So in all these cases, these are things that we can calculate. There's probably a million other things, but these are the most common and useful things we can calculate once we have a basic uh, frequency distribution, or as your book calls it, a group frequency distribution. What I would expect you to know how to do is how to find relative frequency and cumulative frequency, and how to draw a relative frequency histogram or just a regular frequency histogram.